Here's what we got, the Matco MHE51 Zulu. That's the model that we have here. And uh, it's the, uh, you got the wheel, the brake disc, and the caliper, all that good stuff. And this is the finished product right here. This is one of the main wheels for our Zenith 750 Cruiser. And uh, in this video, I am going to show you how I go about the disassembly and then uh, reassembly and the wheel installation and all that stuff. Because it was kind of confusing for me because uh, this is my first time with this particular uh, type of uh, wheel and brake setup. And uh, I couldn't really find much information. So hopefully this video will be helpful to you if you are in the same boat. Standard uh, disclaimers apply. Just because I do it doesn't mean you should. And uh, be sure to check your you know, manufacturer specifications and follow all that good stuff. Okay, let's get started. Let's get our assembly here. Here is our assembly. And as I disassemble this, I'm going to put everything in this box so I don't lose anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take off this uh, caliper right here which is a 7 16 inch wrench. So we've got the spacer right here. Set those aside. So now we've got this guy still connected to there. So now we're going to pull out this cotter pin. Take off this nut. Now the uh, axle will slide out. So that we've got one bearing in the axle and the whole brake assembly there. We've got the uh, bearing on this side. Okay, so now we've got our wheel, the two wheel halves and the brake disc right here. Uh, at this point, it's probably a good idea to just go ahead and mark everything. I think there are, well, there's these marks right here. So what we could do is uh, just Kind of, we may as well just line everything up kind of with these marks just for reference make a little mark so make all the marks you need to remember how to put it back together now we're going to use a T27 Torx bit Set those aside, and then off comes our golden top hat. Very nice. That's the brake disc. All right, now we have our two wheel halves, and what I'm going to do is just break the torque on these guys. And they decided to go with a a hex drive bolt on on one side. I mean the bolt head, and then just a half inch nut on the other. Just to make this a little bit faster, I'm going to get my my uh, little sc screwdriver drill thingy here and use it to get the nuts off the rest of the way. all our washers, nuts, and bolts together. And then these three come out. And these three go just straight through the two halves. And now I'm going to go ahead and mark where the wheel hub, the actual hub, which is this tri triangular you know, piece, uh, lines up with the wheel. So there we go. They line up just like that. 
Okay, so at this point, the hub needs to come off. Uh, well, first, let's separate these wheel halves. So now let's separate the wheel halves, and we're just going to give them... Actually, let me back these off to make sure they're out of the way. Now we can separate the wheel halves. Just want to give them a little, just a little tap tap. There we go. Boom. So we can set that aside. Now we can take out the hub because we need to take out the hub so we can actually get the valve stem through there and have room. I didn't realize that last time and I put the valve stem in kind of backwards and it was kind of a mess. Probably the best way to remove the hub is just going to be to basically just press it out. So I'm just going to get a couple of 2x4s, 2x4 blocks, block on the top. And you could probably, you could just whack it out if you don't have a large enough clamp but I think it's a much better way of doing it to actually just use a clamp and just kind of slowly, evenly press it out. So I'm just gonna tighten the clamp here as I'm doing this. And you can see that it's gonna get pressed out right there. There we go, and it's out. Okay, so wiggle it out. There we go. So now we have the other wheel half, and now we have the hub. And since we made this mark on the hub, we know exactly where to put it back in. I'm not sure if that really matters a ton, but it's probably good practice to do that anyway. Now that we have the wheel assembly apart, we can get the tire and inner tube and start reassembling it. Now we got our inner tube, we got our tire, and we're going to put the inner tube into the tire. Uh, generally, you can use uh, baby powder or something like that to make it easier to get it in there, but, because I don't have baby powder right now, so I'm just going to put this in here. And what we want to do is we want to find the red mark right there, and then we're going to line our valve stem up with the red mark. So I'm just going to kind of finagle this in here. Let me kind of see if I can open this up a little bit. No, that doesn't really help. So we're getting this in here. We're getting it nice and even. Kind of moving it around to get the valve lined up with the red dot. Okay. Now to make sure this fits better and to keep the, the, the tube from getting pinched by the wheel halves when we install them, we're gonna uh, add a little bit of air. So what we're gonna do is take off the valve stem cap and these two nuts this is the washer. Now you'll notice that um, if you don't have any air in your inner tube and you have the valve stem in there, if you try and use your, your air tool to you know, depress the valve stem, it's, it's not gonna, there's not enough back pressure to press the, the air tool little plunger inward to actually let air flow into the inner tube. So what I'm gonna do is back it out a little bit and you might just have to take it all the way off and then just use one of these uh, uh, air, com or air blower tools to just blow air in there. But I'm just gonna back it off a little bit here so that the valve stem will stay in, but it's actually protruding a bit more than it normally would. And then I'm just gonna, oh yeah, that works. So then I'm just gonna uh, put a little bit of air in here. There we go. So it's leaking out of the valve stem because it's not tight, but that's okay. So we've got a little bit of air. Good. I don't want too much air. So now what we want to do is we want to take our wheel half, the one with the hole, 
and it's got this little cutout. And the valve stem is actually, let's see here. Shoot, I might actually need to take some air back out. So you kinda wanna get the inner tube out a little bit, pull this out, because it actually has to kinda point back the other way. So you wanna press this out, at least that's what I'm doing. Press this out and then put the valve stem through that hole. And then it's going to go in this notch. And then you can actually put the wheel have right in there. And what I'm actually going to do is uh, I need to put this nut, or I mean this washer, I need to put this washer on here with the dimple side like up or towards the inner tube. I'm just gonna try and slide this. There we go. Now I need to put this nut on here. I'm not sure how necessary it really is to have this nut and washer on here. And the instructions, what little instructions there are, say that you could use a just a different washer if this dimpled washer is too large okay I'm gonna kind of wiggle this because kind of gets stuck on the threads a little bit now there might not be enough thread sticking out to actually uh, for the nut to thread, but there should be once it inflates, it should kind of press up against there more. So I'm just kind of sticking my fingers uh, behind the inner tube. It's pretty uncomfortable, but just kind of pushing the valve stem out. Ow. Okay, uh, that's good enough for now anyway. So we've got gonna push that back in place there all right good so that's seated now that this is in here I'm going to put the other half on here the other wheel half so you can see the tube is out of the way it's not going to get pinched which is good and I'm gonna line up this hole in between these two other holes is where the valve stem is going to go through like so just like that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and run a couple bolts through to hold it in place. And I need to make sure that they're not the holes where this is gonna go. So that's gonna go right there. Okay, so we'll put one here. I'll just go ahead and run these down a little bit. Now that we got those halves together and they're lined up, we'll go ahead and take our hub, put it on here, and actually I'm gonna I'm gonna run the bolts down a little bit also to help me line things up so that they stick through to the other side of the wheel. Should all line up. Okay, so I'm gonna set the wheel down, get those lined up, and then just kind of press it, press it into place. Good, we want all those bolts and those holes to line up, and you can see that we've still got a gap. We've still got a gap between the actual hub and the wheel, but at, when we tighten the bolts down, it's gonna it's going to bring the, the hub back into the other half of the wheel. So that'll, that'll be uh, basically like pulling them back together. So we don't need to press the hub back in separately. All right. Run these bolts down all the way.
And yeah, that should be pretty snug. And then I'm gonna get my torque wrench here. I have it set to about 100 inch pounds, which is what the manual says, but check your manual and set it to whatever you need to for the proper torque. And we'll go ahead and torque this in uh, like a standard kind of uh, star pattern. And actually, you know what? I need more grip on here as well. So I'm gonna get my vice grips back out. Vice grip this sucker. There we go. That's better. Okay, once you have them all torqued down, go ahead and mark them or uh, you know, use a Sharpie, which is what I have right now because I don't have any uh, uh, puffy paint type stuff torque seal stuff. I don't have any of that torque marking paint. So just use whatever works. Now we can inflate the tire. Put some more in there. Tighten that back down. Make sure it doesn't come out. Make sure it's nice and sealed. Just like finger tight. There we go. Let's put a little bit more in here. It's good enough for now. This is uh, just so we can get our uh, airplane actually on its wheels. So just, you know, do whatever tire pressure you need to put it to. I found some helpful information and links and stuff, and so if I think to, I'll put that in the description below. Hopefully this was helpful at least to give you an idea of kind of how to assemble and disassemble this thing. And then now, of course, you can you know, uh, uh, pack your bearings, stick them in there, put your axles on, all that good stuff, and you know, reinstall your, uh, your golden, golden top hat back on there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.